Hi there, I want to show you this really slick definition of the famous Peterson graph that I first read in the textbook Introduction to Graph Theory by Douglas B. West. One of the tricky things with graphs sometimes, even for graphs as simple as cycle graphs, can be formally describing exactly which vertices in the graph are adjacent. Sometimes what can help with that is a particular clever labeling of the vertices, and that can make it more easy to describe which vertices are adjacent. And this is just such an example. Here, of course, is the famous Peterson graph. If you haven't seen it before, notice how it consists of an outer five cycle, an inner five cycle, and then edges joining five pairs of the vertices. And here is the really slick definition. The Peterson graph is the simple graph whose vertices are the two element subsets of a five element set and whose edges are the pairs of disjoint two element subsets. So if we take a five element set and consider all the two element subsets of that set, those can be the vertices of the Peterson graph. And then all the vertices that are disjoint subsets, those will be the ones that are adjacent. Let's see how this works. It's pretty cool. So by this definition, the vertex labels are based on a five element set. So we just need a five element set. Let's use this one. This is common notation for the set containing one, two, three, four, and five. Then the vertices of the Peterson graph will be the two element subsets of this set. And how many of those are there? That would be our first question. How many vertices are there? How many two element subsets of a five element set are there? We can just answer that with combinations, a binomial coefficient. The answer to the question is how many ways can we choose two objects from a collection of five, denoted five choose two. I won't bother writing out the formula for that. I assume you know. I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson talking about combinations if you're not familiar with it. This is just the number of ways we could pick two things from a collection of five things. And this is equal to 10. So for example, what are the ways that we could pick two numbers from this set of five numbers? Well, we could pick one and two. We could pick four and five. We could pick two and three. And remember, we're talking about subsets. So two, one would be the same as one and two because they're just subsets. Order is not important. In total, there are 10 possibilities. And so there are 10 vertices in the Peterson graph. And of course, our picture agrees with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's two five cycles, so no surprise. The other basic question we might ask is how many edges does the Peterson graph have? Now, of course, we could just count them. We know what the Peterson graph looks like, but I'm more interested in seeing how this definition verifies the characteristics of the Peterson graph. Before we answer this question of how many edges the Peterson graph has in the context of this definition, let's go ahead and label the vertices. I'll label them in a particular way. Of course, you could label them in any way you choose. As long as you follow this definition, you're going to end up with the Peterson graph. But I'm going to label them in such a way so that this picture is going to end up looking like this one. This top vertex I'll call 1, 2, and this one 3, 4, this one 5, 1. This one, two, three. This one will be four, five. This one in here will be one, three. This will be three, five. This will be five, two. This will be two, four. And this one will be four, one. Remember, each vertex is being labeled by a two element subset of our set of five positive integers. So now we've got all 10 vertices labeled. We can start to think about which of them will be adjacent. And by our definition, the ones that will be adjacent are the vertices that are disjoint two element subsets. So for example, one, two, and three, five. They are disjoint two element subsets. One and two, 
3 and 5, they don't have any numbers in common. So they would be adjacent vertices in our Peterson graph. Simple as that. So then, before we draw all these edges, we can start to answer this question. How many edges is the graph going to have? Well, let's think about the first theorem of graph theory, and I'll leave a link in the description to my video on that. Recall, the first theorem of graph theory tells us that if we add up the degrees of all the vertices in a graph, we'll get two times the number of edges. So if I want to figure out how many edges there are, and we'll call that number m, all I need to do is take half of the sum of all the degrees of the vertices in a graph. So let's try and think about the degrees of the vertices in this graph, and if we add them all up and cut it in half, that will give us the number of edges. Each vertex, of course, is something like a, b, where a and b are different numbers from this set, like 3, 4, or 5, 1, and so on. So each vertex, a, b, is adjacent to how many vertices? By definition, it's adjacent to all of the disjoint two element subsets. Each vertex contains two elements of the set, so that leaves three other elements that could be used to define other vertices. For example, if we consider our vertex 1, 2, there are three other numbers that could be used to make adjacent vertices, 3, 4, and 5. And in all the ways that 3, 4, and 5 could be used to define a vertex, those will all have to be neighbors of 1, 2, since they're all disjoint from 1, 2. For example, we could take 3 and 4. That would give us this vertex here, which is disjoint from 1, 2, and so it is, of course, adjacent to 1, 2 by our definition. We could also take 3 and 5, and that gives us this vertex, which we've already joined to 1, 2. The other possibility would be we could take 4 and 5. That gives us this vertex. It's a two-element subset, disjoint from 1, 2, and so they are adjacent. So the idea is a vertex is labeled with a two-element subset of our five-element set. So how many vertices are there that are disjoint from a given vertex, A, B? Well, let me write it in blue. The number is 3. The other three numbers of the set that could make up some two-element subsets, 3 choose 2 because we're still talking about two element subsets. And 3 choose 2, you may know, is equal to, whoops, I wrote 1, I meant to write 3. It's 3. Each vertex, by definition, is going to have to be adjacent to three other vertices. Let's quickly go through the logic one more time for why each vertex has to have three neighbors. Consider the vertex 2, 3. That leaves 1, 4, and 5, the other three numbers, to be used to make two element subsets that are disjoint from 2, 3. And how many ways can that be done? How many vertices does that give us? Well, we've got three numbers, and we're picking two of them to make vertices. So it's 3, choose 2. There are three ways to do that, and that's it. The possibilities are we could pick 1 and 4, giving us this vertex here. Remember, the order of the numbers doesn't matter, and so these would be adjacent. Or we could have 1 and 5, giving us this vertex here, and so those guys would be adjacent. Or the last possibility, we could pick 4 and 5, giving us the third neighbor of 2, 3. So let's revisit this equation. How many edges does the Peterson graph have? Well, it has half the sum of the degrees. So let's write this. Half the sum of the degrees, what's that? Well, we've got a total of 10 vertices. We already answered that question. And we just figured out that each vertex has a degree of 3. So 10 times 3. That's the sum of the degrees. And that's half of 30, which is... 15. And indeed, that's how many edges the Peterson graph has. You can count them over here, and I'll go ahead and finish filling them in in this picture. 
And there it is. You can see if you check that it fits this definition exactly. Just to point out a couple more edges, for example, 5, 2, and 1, 3. They've got no numbers in common. They're disjoint, so they're joined by an edge. 3, 4, and 2, 3. They have three in common, so they are not joined by an edge, and so on. So this is a really cool definition for the Peterson graph. I think it's pretty quick and easy to understand, and it gives us a nice way to work out some results of the Peterson graph. As we did today, we just figured out that the Peterson graph is three regular, all of its vertices have degree three, and such a graph is sometimes called a cubic graph. So that's this cool definition. Hope you like it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Cool.